Uh, hello, this is, this is going to be part two of our uh, walkabout through the uh, QTVLM with uh, setup, various setup uh, uh, preferences and things like that. And so here, and I'm ju I just left this the way I found it actually when I turned it on, and uh, it shows something, and it's got all this writing all over here, all these uh, low labels, and that's because I was actually looking for a particular place, so I turned all those labels on. This is in the background set of maps, chart, maps. And so let's first of all just get rid of those. And remember the keystroke, I'm doing a Mac, so I'm Command Option V. And that brings me right to the chart setup page. And, um, and then we're going to come back and look at these font sizes and things like that. But right now, let's see, it brought me to the charts. I, and, and these labels are in the background, so I have to go up here to the background here, GSHHS, that's the background files. We discuss that elsewhere. So none of this, we're not using any of these M tiles, but here's where the labels come from. And then I would just shut off the country names for now, and then the label four is all the details possible. You may just shut that off. Again, you can come back in and, sh and turn on as much of that detail as you want, and then just say okay. And now it's a, and see those are all the rivers. In fact, um, there's a lot of rivers in the world. I'm going to get a little bit cleaner picture here by going here and uh, shutting off the world's rivers uh, like that. Okay. Okay. So there we are. So now let's start. Um, let's start with some fonts. Let's with some setups. Okay. So again, there's you can go. You can go from the main menu into the preferences and get to here. And that's the list. You see all these here. And what I'm going to look at, and I don't know if this is, this is about like the default on this font size, which which many may find that a little bit small. Now, one thing I notice, I see this is Arial. This doesn't come with Arial. It comes with a different choice, but I set that to Arial, just dropping there and choosing Arial for that because we just like Arial here. And But this font size here will be somewhere around the middle, or I mean, actually just south of the middle here, but this looks like it's a little bit too small. Uh, so I'm going to just make that slightly bigger. Let me just take it. And it's pretty sensitive, so I would just try like that. So let's for now just put that one up there. And the status bar is this number here. And you may want that. I've got that cranked up already. I think it probably started here. And I've cranked it up a little bit myself already. Let's come back to that. The toolbar size, that's these up here. This is where, whoops, it doesn't like that. See these? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like that. Anyway, here are these icons up here on the toolbar. They look about right in the middle here. We're not you. This is not uh, an issue right now. We can forget that. The compass size right in the middle doesn't matter. This is. We don't need to worry about this right now. Let's just look ahead and say one of the beauties of the program is any of the data that we collect on the instruments, like when we're simulating or when we're looking at grip files to watch the wind or the currents or. Uh, we're simulating, we got boat speed and wind direction, whatever. We can, and that's all stored, and then we can plot graphs of it. We can plot graphs, and this is a way to set the style of those graphs. We don't need that. And this is something you can come back and play with here. This is where you change the, you change just about everything to meet your needs. Like if you want track, this is a track behind the boat. Right now it's, a, and I think I've actually changed that already. It may be smaller than that to begin with. But you could click it here and you say you want the track to be red, that's okay. And you want the track to be a little bit bigger, this is a, a point size, I think that's point size there. And so I just made the tracks like that. But again, you get here, you click it, you figure the thing you want to change, and you drop it down and change it. You'll have to experiment with that. Oh, look, I can make the, <laughs> I can make the rivers even bigger. Okay, so then what else we have on this page? Appearance. This is general appearance. Then we've got Oh, these are now uh, function. These are the display functions within the software. I would turn both. I think for for computers that we're using here, I would turn both of those on. Turn both of those on. If you're a Mac, I guess you would turn this on as well. 
Now these, that's, by the way, the setting that we made for the font here, the font size, and also these two settings, they're not going to take effect until we restart. So what we're going to do is, uh, in a minute, shut it off and restart. But here is uh, allow, p this one, I think default is over here. I would say for the time being, turn this on. Uh, that will come up later on. Uh, it just means that when you make a mark, you can grab it and move it immediately. And if you shut that off, then you can't, which is a little bit of a safety to keep from, keep from making a mistake. But we have a lot of ways to protect things, and it's convenient to move marks it fast. So I would turn that on. Okay, so that's okay. And then remember, you have to always sit okay. So let's, let's do that before we do anything. And uh, GOL modification will be applied at the next. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Now, when I change the font, it doesn't remind me of this, but you also have to reboot when you change the font. Okay. So that's that. I'm going to close the program, uh, quit the program, and then I'm going to reload the program. Okay. So now this is that way. Let's see what these things look like here. See, it's a little bit bigger. You might even want to go just a hair bigger than that. But anyway, you can play with that. That's the same fonts you're going to see when you're setting up your, you know, all these, uh, well, you know, your other areas. So this font you may want to set a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's go to the, but let's just go to the next one. Um, we go to general units. Let's look at the units now, and the units. So English for us here, a decimal separator. Now in Europe, they use when we say one thousand and we write it one comma three zeros. They do a dot. They do one dot three thousand. And so this is set up with a dot here. So for for us, we would for America, U.S. applications, and I don't know what the British. I guess the same way. You'd put a comma. This is a. This is an unusual one. This is a comma separated values and the defaults a semicomma. But um, I would change that back to a comma. There's a subtlety here. When we get to loading polars, the, the, the input polars as a CSV file will indeed have to be semicolons. But for now, uh, we change that to a comma. It's, this is not a critical point. OK, coordinates and distances. OK, this matters. This is the most common for marine navigation degrees, like a 35 degrees, 22.8 minutes, like that, okay? Now, you will find examples where it's more convenient to go to decimals, but the, and this is rarely used here, rarely used, um, except in the, strangely enough, in the light list and some of the notice to mariners, they actually specify the the position of a buoy to within about uh, the, you know, a finger, finger or two width, and, uh, you know, f f ridiculous, inaccurate. But anyway, uh, but that doesn't matter. We don't use that anyway. And so here, uh, we got degrees, minutes, yeah, that one, ortho and distance in the selection tool. Oh, now that default is going to be off. But, um, and let's actually leave that off for now, and I'll come back to that. This is actually a really nice feature, but um, let's wait on that a minute because there, there, I think there's some changes coming in the next build. All right, speed and distance knots, uh, depth. Now here, Americans, what I would say normally, you would go to feet here, like that. American users are most of our students. But in reality, when we start working with these ENCs, the native, the native, the native units in ENCs, meters. So you might well be bouncing back and forth as we tiptoe into the metric scale here. You got You can play with that here. Okay. With time, the basic would be UTC. The only thing that could happen is you're maybe looking up time or currents or something, and you may temporarily change here to this. So I would leave that UTC. And this is day, month, that's like 3rd of June, and this is June the 3rd. I'd say that's probably better. Okay, so that's the settings for that one. And the language, and then the toolbar. Oh, we've done the toolbar in lesson in the first walkabout. So let's say okay. And then what do we have here? Oh, we have this. Let me just mention the status bar. Oh, that's a that's big enough status bar to read, okay. But we also read in the status bar the wind and other parameters here. Um, so that's why you want this to be legible. 
This is the distance to the boat. You see, if I, now I'm putting the command key down, I'm gonna zoom into our area here, and I'm gonna zoom into the area again, and I'm gonna move the boat here, move the boat here. Now you see this, I think I've talked about this before, but this is now, this number down here is a distance to the boat. But if we also put wind here, like if I just went and drew this box and then right click it and say load this partial grip, I just wanna get some wind in there in a hurry, right? Now there's wind there now, you see. Now if I, now you see down here in the status bar, down here, you're reading the wind. So that's why you want this to be a nice legible number. Okay, there's my 10 minutes. I'm gonna stop on a walking tour part two.